A California judge has issued a rule that blocks a new rule from the White House that would protect citizens from being forced to pay for drugs and devices that cause abortion. So the way that this particular one worked, the way that this particular law – or sorry, this particular rule that was handed down by the White House would work is it was basically saying that we're not going to pursue – we're not going to pursue people that are not in compliance with the Obamacare mandate, even though I still think it's weird that they're even doing this because you have to also keep in mind that the Little Sisters of the Poor made essentially the same argument and they won their Supreme Court case. So I'm a little confused on why this is even still an issue. Maybe there's somebody that's an attorney that's w more well-versed in this stuff than I am that will call in 860-1440 and, and will be able to explain why this is even an issue or how this even came up in court after SCOTUS already ruled on it once and ruled in the favor of the Little Sisters of the Poor in favor of the Christians. Uh, and I believe so on, on Hobby Lobby as well, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe those were circuit court opinions and it only affects a certain circuit. I don't really know. But anyway... The reason that I bring that up and, and I say all that to say that the California judge has issued this new rule that would remove those protections. So Christians, presumably, that disagree with abortion would now, under this particular ruling, if it, it were to go into effect, that they would have to pay for abortion pills or abortion devices and cover it through insurance. So if you're a Christian and you own a business and you provide health care, you're no longer allowed to say, oh, okay, I'll pay for their health care, but I'm not going to pay for their abortion contraceptives. First of all, I don't understand why insurance would cover contraceptives anyway when you're talking about a health care plan, because it is an elective thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand that birth control does certain things that aren't even necessarily related to birth. For example, for some women, it helps clear up their skin, regulate their hormones. I get that it does that. But I'm just talking about it's still an elective thing. Nobody's going to die or get sick if you don't have birth control. Or if that were the case, you would think that your doctor would need to prescribe it to you in a different way. But when it comes to this, the insurance ought not have to pay for abortion medication. We're talking about the Plan B pill that terminates a pregnancy after the embryo has already been fertilized. And so if you believe that life begins at conception, then you believe that the plan B pill snuffs out that life, that that life is ended by this medication. And so what this judge in California is saying is, nope, you, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you believe in it or not, you have to pay for another person's abortion. It's just absolutely horrific the way this country has gone mad with their dedication to killing children. So as bad as this decision is, and it is, I think what's actually worse is the rationale behind it because the verdict of course matters, but how you get to that verdict also matters, especially when you're talking about the law. So this is an excerpt from a, a, a article I read on life news, California attorney general, uh, Attorney General Xavier Becerra argued in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California that a regulation issued by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services would prevent an insufficient number of California women from conceiving and giving birth to children. In California's view, he argued, the problem is not that the federal government under Obama's regulation was forcing Christians to act against their faith and actions resulted in the destruction of innocent life. The problem is that under President Trump's regulation, more babies might be conceived and born in California, and thus the state would be forced to pay for them. All right, first of all, well, maybe this is a reason that you don't have a massive welfare state like you do in the state of California. Maybe this is part of the reason that you don't offer free crap to people when they have children because – if you're incentivizing births, especially births out of wedlock, you shouldn't be surprised when you subsidize that, that more people jump onto that system. And so if you really want to limit the people that you are forced to pay for based on your own laws, the solution to that is cutting back the welfare state, not killing more children. 
Anyway, he continues on, and this is A.G. Becerra in his own words. In California, 48% of all pregnancies were unintended in 2010. Of those unplanned pregnancies that resulted in births, 64.3% were publicly funded, costing California $689.3 million in unintended pregnancies. So his logic here is the reason we have to force Christians to pay for abortion pills and abortion devices against their will is that babies are just too darn expensive for the state of California. That the state has to pay for so many of them, and because of that, we've got to kill more children. Well, if that's the logic that we're using, why don't we just off everybody in an orphanage? Seriously. If that is your reason, you're saying, look, they're just too darn expensive, we can't afford them, so because of that, you know what we need to do? We need to put all the orphans in our state in gas chambers, because it's costing the state just an awful lot of money to keep them afloat. And by the way, you know how we'll actually fund that? We'll get the local church to sponsor the gas chamber we're putting these orphans into and gassing them to death. You've got to be outside your ever-loving mind. How did the AG of California come to this conclusion that the reason that we need to be able to force Christians into purchasing abortion products that they do not agree with, whether or not you even think abortion should be legal, is actually a separate issue from whether or not you believe Christians ought to pay for a practice they believe is morally reprehensible. But even so, he's saying the reason that we need to have that happen is because we're just having too many unintended pregnancies out there, which again, they have access to abortion, or sorry, they have access to abortion on a large scale in California, and it's not stopping the unintended pregnancy. So obviously, you're not really doing even your own argument as weird and twisted and evil as it is, is still not giving you the results that you want to in this. But your rationale for forcing Christians to, even if you don't necessarily agree with their stance on this, which of course I do, to force them to engage in something that at least they view as murder is, well, it's just costing the state too much money. Isn't it amazing how liberals seem to only care about finances and only care about how much money is being spent when it fits one of their policies? The only reason that they become fiscal conservatives, whether you're talking about the shutdown right now, whether you're talking about uh, when it comes to abortion, the only time that they even seem aware that the government is spending too much money is when doing so or the, trying to decrease it would be by supporting one of their policies. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And here's another thing, too. When they defunded Planned Parenthood in Texas, when they got rid of that, you know what happened to the state? Not only did abortions drop by over 4%, but unintended pregnancies also dropped by 4%. See, that was the opposite of what all the liberals in the state were crying about when they decided to defund it. They said that what's going to happen is you're going to see uh, teen uh, single births and, and teen births skyrocket because they have nowhere to go get an abortion. No, actually, the opposite happened. You just had less people getting pregnant when you no longer had that giveaway of saying, oh, yeah, go out, have as much sex as you want. We'll pay for your abortion. See, it turns out once you actually hold people responsible for their actions, they tend to be a little bit more cautious in taking those actions. Now, it didn't solve the problem. There's still unintended births in Texas, and there's still people getting abortions in Texas, and I understand that. But what I'm saying is when the government said, okay, you can do it if you want to, we're not going to fund it, we're not going to bankroll you in that, then all of a sudden people started actually acting more responsibly. And so it turns out that doing that actually decreased the money that the state was spending on that. Both on the end of not paying for the, uh, the services offered by Planned Parenthood and also on the other side of the equation, they saved money on that side too because there were less wards of the state, there were less unintended pregnancies that the state and federal government had to help support. And so actually, even if you took the moral equation out of it and didn't care that abortion was immoral and evil, even if you took that part out of it, the attorney general's argument still doesn't make any sense 
because we've seen states that cut back on funding for abortions actually see less abortions and less unintended pregnancies happening. So even if you were looking at it as a purely economic equation and ignoring the morality altogether, it's still the more economic decision to not fund this massive welfare state and to fund abortions. So he, even using his own logic, it doesn't pan out. But the thing is, this is really the result of communist Marxist thinking. That's all it is. And the reason that I say that and bring that up is because if you understand what's known as the complete live system, if you understand the basis of Marxism being that you are only useful as a collective, then you understand how in his mind this actually does make sense. Because if you look at people as nothing more than a cog in a machine and you only have value in what you contribute to society or contribute to the masses, in other words, you as an individual don't actually have any significance, but you as a part of society, as a part of the government, as a taxpayer, you have value because of what you're contributing to society, then this actually does make sense. That guy is eating way more potatoes than he's growing, so we got to off him. I mean, this goes back to the very early days of Marxism. George Bernard Shaw, the Fabian Society, one of the earliest, I would think actually Europe's oldest, Marxist society, one of the things that he said, and we have a recording of him saying this, is that occasionally people should have to go before a board and say, sir or madam, justify your existence to us. And then if they cannot justify their existence, in other words, they can't say, look, I'm producing more potatoes than I grow. I'm contributing to society in this way. Then we have to have a method to kill them. This is where the idea of a gas chamber actually came from originally. George Bernard Shaw saying that we should figure out a way to humanely put them down in mass, those that aren't contributing more to society than they're taking, those that can't justify their existence to a board of bureaucrats. And this is the kind of thinking that is leading to the Attorney General of California saying, look, we got to kill these kids. They're just too darn expensive to keep alive. Even though that's actually not true, you still have this line of thinking to where you are not important human life is not intrinsically valuable unless it is contributing to society as a whole you're not important as an individual you're only important as what you can contribute to the masses it's a horrific way to look at humanity and it has led to some of the greatest human tragedies and mass genocide in human history everywhere from nazism to communism to mao's china I mean, just horrible human atrocities. But this is the same line of thinking that is being used in California to justify doing this. And if you know anything about the complete live system that one of the Obama architects, Ezekiel Emanuel, designed, this is exactly what he was talking about when he said we need to ration gov government health care. Because he, he, he said that his goal was a single-payer system that revolved around the complete live system. And what the complete live system is, and you can look all this up, double check me, do your own homework, is he's basically saying that you have to make an evaluation of how valuable that person is going to be to society. So for example, a young person that is in his 20, 20s, 30s, something like that, and still has several years to pay into the system and to produce and to make more money, that person is going to get care before and give, be given priority before Older people that have already, quote unquote, lived their life or lived a complete life, according to him. And the same would be said of babies that it will take several years before they are able to contribute to society because they're children. I mean, it is a horrific, it look, it reads like you pulled it right out of a dystopian novel. Some of the things that Ezekiel Emanuel has said, and this is one of the guys that helped craft Obamacare. But it's the same line of thinking that we're seeing here, that people are only valuable based on the contributions that they can make to society. You see, to the central planners, you're just a cow in a pasture. That's all you are. You're not an individual. You're not a thinking individual. You're not a human being. You're not a rational adult that is allowed to make his own decisions. You're just a cow. And every April 15th, they got to come out and milk you. They got to come out and see what you're doing to contribute to society, they got to get those taxes from you. Really, that's the only value you have to them. Because to the central planner, you're just a number, just a piece of livestock. 
You're not an individual. And so because of that, you are only valuable based on what you can contribute. And just like a farmer who goes out amongst his dairy herd and sees one cow that just isn't producing year after year, you're just, sorry, you're just a piece of livestock to them. You get turned into hamburger meat. That's what happens to you. If you're not putting out the amount of milk that they see or the amount of tax dollars in this case that they see as being sufficient, then they believe that they have the right to deny you health care and just let you go ahead and die. Again, it is a horrific, ghoulish way to look at humanity, to just devalue human life to basically only being worth something if you're worth something to the collective. But it really is how they think, and the governor, sorry, the attorney general of the state of California has just proven that by saying that the reason we need to force people to be able to pay for abortions, even if they don't believe in abortion themselves, is because we need to kill more children. We need less babies to be born because it's just too expensive to keep them alive. And I hate to say that, but that is the line of thinking that we're seeing crop up even right here in the United States of America. And in the words of Thomas Jefferson, I tremble for my country when I remember that God is just and that his justice will not sleep forever. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. What's that? Oh, you want to know what the content's going to be? You want to know what's in it? No, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's in it.